Okay, now that we have our storyboard sketch, which shows us the major actions that are going to happen um, in our transformation, beginning, middle, and end, we now know what assets we need to collect. So I want you to think of this like you are working for Tim Burton and he is making a sequel to Nightmare Before Christmas, but it stars your characters and your environment, whatever you're going to animate. And so you have to think, okay, the way that that film works is they build a bunch of little puppets and then they build a bunch of sets to put those puppets in. And then they individually pose each puppet in the set and then take a photograph. And that's one frame of film. And then if Jack Skellington is opening his mouth, you need to make a new head for that puppet that has a slightly open mouth and then a slightly more open mouth and then a fully open mouth. And then you take a picture of it with each of those different heads. So our characters that are gonna be in the animation are puppets and then aspects of our characters that change are, are like parts of those puppets. And we're gonna build those all as different layer assets. And then the set that everything is happening on that's our environment, and it could just be a blank white square. Or we can figure out what that background is going to be, right? So for me, I'm using my character as my puppet. The character actions are, he's not going to open his mouth, but he's going to move his head. He's going to move his arms. He's going to shiver and move. And then what else happens to the character is ice needs to start building around the character. So those are just like in a Tim Burton film, if I wanted to freeze someone, I'd have to build little ice cubes to put around the character. More and more and more. And then I also have setting assets. So I need a setting that can change from getting colder and cloudier to having the sun come out and it get warmer and warmer again. So let's start collecting these. So I have my folder for assignment five. I've already started collecting references just to kind of speed it up. I used Pixabay for this. So I have references for a frozen wasteland because I know that's where my story is going to get to by the middle where he's kind of frozen solid. So is the environment. And then I, from Pixabay, found what I could for ice blocks, you know, chunks of ice that I can use and internally composite to build up and create my creature out of ice, like it's frozen within ice. And that's very much like the cloud creature assignment that assignment four that we skipped. Um, I'll be teaching you kind of the same skills as I show how I build that up. And then what are the main assets I'm missing though? I'm missing my character, I'm missing my environment. So for that, I'm gonna go back to assignment two for my creature and i want the finished png because a png does not have a background it's fully cut out so the better job you do on assignment two the easier it is to use that as your your puppet for your animation and so i'm just gonna copy that into my assignment five folder so that's my character asset and then i'm going to go to assignment one and I'm going to use the full PSD project, the multi-layered PSD, as my setting asset. Why do I use the, the PNG that's all combined as a cutout for my creature, but I use the PSD, which is multi-layer, for my setting? Well, that's because this allows me to put my creature into different levels of the setting. So now they're all in assignment five. And I might change them a little bit in their name. So they don't accidentally get confused with my other assignment files. Okay, and now I have, I have the assets I think I need to get started. I can always do more research to find them later. But I'm looking at my sketch. 
and I'm seeing, okay, now if I'm going to build these in, in digital art, compositing in Photopea, what do I need? I need a character, I need a setting. So let me start with that first panel. So I go into Photopea. I'm going to open from my computer. I'm going to find Assignment 5. And I'm going to open up the PSD. Now, this is a big file. And the first thing I know is that I want to show it in a square format, not in this format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the crop tool and I'm going to hold down shift. And what shift does is it forces it to be a square format. And I'm going to make it as big as I can, so as wide as I can, but square. And then I think I want the, the ground. So there's a lot of ground there, but there's also a lot of rock. So let me think. What if I shift it up? Because we can modify whatever we need at this point because I need some of that sky to show. So this might be a better cropping. And, and then I can set my creature into it. So if I know my creature is going to go somewhere in here, now what I want to do is go to my very top layer and then say edit, or rather file, open and place. And I'm going to add in my PNG creature. So this is just like assignment three that we skipped, putting our creature believably into our landscape. My creature, creature is plenty big, and it comes in as a smart object. And instead of placing him down here, I want to place him over here somewhere, maybe behind the rocks. So the first thing I'll do is Control T in Photo P, shrink him down, holding down Shift so it doesn't distort him. And I kind of want the rocks because I think they'll look cool in the wintry environment. But I have to decide, well, how do I integrate my creature? Well, I can start by just moving my creature down through the layers. So you see, this is why the PSD is helpful. It goes down through the, the um, texture overlay layers. And kind of changes. The mist goes in front and now it's going to start going behind some of those foreground layers until it gets covered up. So I want to find the right placement of it. And then I want to find the right size. So maybe I put him over here. I want him behind those rocks or in front of those rocks. It's kind of nice to cover up. Oh. <laughs> Playing peekaboo. It's kind of nice to cover up a little bit of the feet. So I don't need to worry about uh, shadows changing as the character cha moves. But I can also play with, whoops, Control T, not Command T. Even as a smart object, I can flip it horizontally. See how that looks. And then I can think of the composition I want it to fulfill. Yeah, I think that will work. I don't want my creature to be too small in the frame because it is going to be 
a major component of my animation. I almost wonder if I want to lose this little mountainside. Yeah, I have enough assets here in the environment that uh, I can kind of shift stuff around as well. So I'm going to do something a little crazy here. I'm going to take all these foreground elements. This is the beauty of having multiple layers and compositing. So everything that's in front of my creature, except for the texture fills. And this is why we saved it with the new name, because I don't want to be changing my assignment one this way. But I'm going to flip all of that horizontally. And then actually move my creature in front of it. There it is. Often I will um, make my creature a recognizable color. So it's easier to find that layer. Move that above. Set it down. And now this is starting to match my storyboard sketch a little bit better, right? My thinking of how it will be placed in my environment. And it gives me lots of room to, uh, to play with it. And then I'm going to be even weirder. I'm going to delete all these layers that aren't turned on. And I'm going to merge. Let's see. I want... Yeah, I want the foreground to be separate. So I'm going to merge all of these background layers together. So I hold down shift, select them all, and then go to layer, merge layers. Took a while, but it did it. So now everything is combined behind. Ah, come on. And that allows me to use control T and actually squish it all a little bit so I can fit more into the square for the animation. Now why are we making our animation square? It's because it's a really universal format, you know, online for GIF animations. It's good for Instagram, but it's also good for just compositing and storytelling. You don't have a lot of empty space that way to deal with. You can always just focus on what's most important to you. So now when I try to find my square, I have a little bit more range and then I can decide, okay, I want to squish it even more. Keep doing Command T instead of Control T. <laughs> and I can find the right kind of composition and shot that works. Okay, so now I'm going to crop holding down shift, my final square saves memory. I can move guides to match that, to kind of stick to it on all sides. And then I can delete these layers I'm not using. And then decide, well, how much of this stuff do I need? Not a whole lot. Maybe I can merge a lot of these texture overlays. 